Did you know that in the book of Romans, um, the first several chapters, especially <clears throat> Romans 4 through 8, did you know that <clears throat> when it speaks of the flesh, it's mostly speaking about you trying to obtain salvation and righteousness by the works of the law, by your own abilities. Because, like, so I'm going to read in, in, in chapter 4 real quick. In verse 1, it says, What then shall we say that Abraham our father has found according to the flesh? Think about that. Abraham, our father, has found according to the flesh. For if Abraham was justified by works, he has something to boast about, but not before God. For what does the scripture say? Abraham believed God, and it was accounted to him for righteousness. Now to him who works, the wages are not counted as grace, but as debt. So if you're working, you expect to be paid. If you're working to obtain salvation you're expecting to be saved through your works and through your abilities but to him who does not work but believes on him who justifies the ungodly his faith is accounted for righteousness just as david also describes the blessedness of the man to whom god imputes righteousness apart from works okay and works and flesh flesh and works blessed are those whose whose lawless deeds are forgiven and whose sins are covered blessed is the man to whom the lord shall not impute sin sin so that's romans chapter four that's uh, verses one through eight i'm going to jump i'm going to jump over here to um to romans eight <clears throat> and let's just look at this some more and remember have the mindset of works, flesh, law. They're all cupped together here. This is, this is not just talking about all sin. This is talking about law versus grace. So now we're in Romans chapter 8. I'll start in verse 1. <clears throat> and I'm in New King James, so it has probably some scripture in here that you're not used to if you're not reading from uh, that line of Bibles that was written off of the Textus Receptus. Verse 1, Romans 8. There's therefore now no condemnation to those who are in Christ Jesus who do not walk according to the flesh, but according to the Spirit. So <clears throat> if you're walking according to the flesh, you're walking to your own abilities, your own abilities to receive and maintain salvation. <clears throat> For the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus has made us free from the law of sin and death. For what the law could not do in that it was weak through the flesh, God did by sending his own son in the likeness of sinful flesh. He sent his own son in the likeness of sinful flesh on account of of sin. He condemned sin in the flesh. Your flesh is going to die. It's already been condemned. <clears throat> that the righteous requirement of the law, <clears throat> excuse me, might be fulfilled in us who do not walk according to the flesh, but according to the spirit. So the requirements of the law are fulfilled in us who aren't trying to keep the law, who aren't trying to maintain salvation through works and our own, and our own abilities. For those who live according to the flesh set their minds on the things of the flesh, but to those who, who live according to the Spirit, the things of the Spirit. And the things of the Spirit are salvation through trusting and believing in Christ. Not your flesh abilities, not your ability to keep the law. What's the law? Ten commandments and a whole bunch more. <clears throat> 
For to be carnally minded, that means flesh minded, is death. But to be spiritually minded is life and peace. Because you understand that it's not by your works, but by simply trusting in Christ. Because the carnal mind is an enmity, is enmity against God. It means you are at war with God, for it is not subject to the law of God, nor indeed can be. So when you're trying so hard to be good enough and work hard enough and, and keep all the commandments and keep all the laws to be... Um, to try to be righteous in the eyes of God, you're actually at war with him. You're actually fighting against him. Think about that next time you see a preacher who's out there holding up a sign, repent, turn from your wicked ways and come to Jesus. Because you can't. You come to Jesus and then you have a mind change. And you can, and by his power, we are, he cleans us up. It's by his power. You just pursue him. Because a carnal mind is enmity against God, for it is not subject to the law of God, nor indeed can be. So, then those who are in the flesh can not please God. Those who are trying to keep the law cannot please God. But you are not in the flesh, but in the spirit, if indeed the spirit of God dwells in you. I think this is good news. I think it's good news. I think we really need to understand as we read through Romans, which is a pretty tough read, and pray over it and look at the, the context of it and just all that it entails. We have to understand that a lot of this, most of this, is talking about your inability to please God through your being good only thing that really pleases God is that we know him. And when we know him, we receive his spirit. And when we receive his spirit, blessed are those whose lawless deeds are forgiven and whose sins are covered. Blessed is the man to whom the Lord shall not impute sin. Get to know him. Thank you for letting me share. Have a great day.